Now, police could be given more powers to close down protests before they cause serious disruption, and that is under new plans from the government. Now, the prospect, uh, proposed amendment, sorry, will aim to allow the police to crack down on a disruptive minority who use tactics such as slow marching and also blocking roads. And this would allow officers to have more flexibility over how they can intervene. Uh, but the bill is likely to provoke strong opposition from some peers who've uh, been critical of previous attempts to increase police powers. And it also sparked outrage from some civil liberties campaigners who fear that the government's approach is an attack on people's rights to protest. Uh, joining me now is animal rebellion activist Orla Coughlin. I hope I said that right, Orla. Orla, OK, talk to me. What, what difference would this legislation make to your protests? Thanks so much for having me, Nana. Um, well, I think this, the issue with this le legislation is that it's so vast and it's so broad that it affects um, everybody, everybody who's interested in protesting, everybody who's been to a protest before. And that's the key issue. You know, the, the legislation says that it would be targeting, you know, groups that are more extreme. They said they would be targeting um, protests that are too disruptive. But that's really in question at the moment that we don't know what too disruptive is and, and how can they possibly po police what, what that is. Well, well, actually, they've been quite specific because they've uh, sort of talked about criminalising disruption caused by tunnelling. Um, so, as we know, some of the activists have made little tunnels and things like that. So they've been very specific, surely. And uh, that doesn't affect sort of normal sort of non-disruptive protests. I mean, making a tunnel is, is, is not, you know, is something that is specific in that bill. So some of the things have been specific, but the other half of the bill is incredibly unspecific. So, you know, things like... If I were to have a protest um, in Parliament Square and there was a big group of people in Parliament Square, Square, and if the police at any point thought that the road might be blocked, then they would be able to arrest everybody in Parliament Square. Um, and so it's it, it, these, this broad um, sweeping um, rulings that really leave almost an impossibility um, for general public to engage in protest without the risk of criminalisation. But surely if you're in that square and you're not really doing anything wrong, you wouldn't be worried about that. I mean, I, I hear you there because obviously it's down to the discretion as to whether uh, they suspect that you're going to protest or not. But if you are intending to protest, and it's quite obvious if people are, they'll have banners and all sorts of placards and things, um, surely they, the police actually probably now have the right to stop you. This is just being very specific and actually giving them the confidence to do so. Well, Nana, as, as you and I and all, all your viewers know that protesting is a fundamental human right. And so simply being in Parliament Square with banners is completely not illegal. Um, and then giving the police the powers to then arrest people on the pretense that they may go and do something that's, you know, it's, it's a hypothesis. You can't, you know, I'm, I'm not saying this um, on behalf of, of climate protests or any organisation, but uh, as the British public in general need to be incredibly concerned about this. We're talking about not just the climate protests, but the anti-lockdown protests, you know, that some of your viewers may have been in favour. And we're talking about the vigils for Sarah Everard. You know, if there's a river in your locality that is, you know, being filled with waste, you may not be able to go out and protest against that for fear that, you know, you could be arrested for even, you know, considering having a march on the street. Yeah, I hear you, but, but ultimately the, the right to peace, peaceful protest hasn't been taken away, so people can still peacefully protest. Um, I mean, what about, I mean, what about instances where, you know, people lying on the, in, on the motorway and stopping ambulances and things like that from getting through? This is partly why this is here. Surely you must agree that that's, this is a good thing for things like that. Well, Rishi Sunak has said that these um, new implementations are going to be I suppose, brought into place to combat um, protests such as Just Stop Oil, such as Animal Rebellion. Um, but I don't think that um, an escalation in law is going to result in people um, not taking direct action, not protesting. We've, we know already that there are, I think, 15 people in prison at the moment for climate protest. We know that we have laws at the moment that are perfectly capable of um, charging and prosecuting people who are engaged in protest. You know, we've had hundreds of arrests, hundreds of convictions, um, and protests are still continuing because people are afraid for their human rights and for their futures. So I don't think any escalation in severity of, of um, criminalization is going to uh, result in less protesting.
Well, perhaps they're going to do this and then see if it does, because, I mean, because I, I've got to admit that I, I find it very irritating if I'm going, trying to get somewhere and there's somebody on a motorway gantry stopping all the traffic and uh, causing me disruption, when actually, ultimately, I probably would agree with part of their cause. I just don't agree with the way they're doing it, and it's costing me time, money, and that sort of thing. So th this is what this is meant to address. Now, I get what you're saying, that other people could be caught in the, in the crossfire, because of this, but the reason they're putting this legislation is because the protests have become so extreme, and, and that's the issue, really, surely. Well, with the difficulty with, with bringing out laws like this, is we often see the government, you know, bring these laws forward, but they are never able to uh, retract them, or very rarely do you see laws that have been brought out being um, taken back. And I think, um, this is my opinion, that the government are, are really afraid at the moment. They're afraid of the unions. That's why they're cracking down on unions. Um, they're afraid of public protest, people standing up for their human rights, um, because they know that there's a massive power um, when people come together as a collective. And this is a government that, you know, for the last 12 years have... Um, been ignoring the people um, and we're in a cost of living crisis at the moment our NHS is on its knees and we're facing a climate and ecological catastrophe and um, people are waking up and they're coming together and the government are really afraid. Well I mean it's, uh, I hear you uh, something does need to be done with regard to strikes but I don't think that those can go in the same bag as these protests but, uh, but, but we, I do hear what you're saying but, but ultimately the people don't want to be disrupted constantly on a daily basis for a cause that most of us would agree with, but we just don't. A lot of people don't agree with the tactics. Orla Cochrane, thank you very much for talking to me. She's from Animal Rebellion. She's an activist. Right, well, let's move on, because this afternoon I'm asking, should there be limits on people's rights to protest? Uh, well, GB News is the people's channel, and this show is nothing without you and your views at home. So to give uh, their opinion, I'm joined by some GB News voices, Julie Shaw and Lee Webb. Right, so uh, I'm going to start with you, Julie. All right, Julie, what do you think Hi. about this? I mean, the government are well, remo removing the right to protest, but they're just putting actual specifics on it. Yeah, but I just think that this is another step towards quelling the, the right to speak freely. I mean, I'm an author, and the things I write about, the vernacular I use, where, where's it going to end? Are we going to... Are we going to be shut up next? I mean, how about the government pass some bills about the injustices or the environmental issues that these protesters are banging on about rather than just seek to shut them up? They're going to be able to pick and choose who they shut up and who they leave alone. Will Rishi Sunak ban all the speakers down at Hyde Park in Speaker's Corner? I mean, I've heard some horrible hate speech spouted off down there. Nobody does a thing. There's a big difference between free speech and incitement. I think ban that, leave the protesters to argue for what the government won't. Yeah, it's tricky, isn't it? Because I'm sort of caught in the middle of this one, because I kind of agree that something needs to be done about this sort of protest, but I'm not sure that, 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 that more legislation is the thing. Lee, what do you think? Lee Webb? I, I've been on both sides of a protest, um, because I've been on the bad side of the protest in Northern Ireland as a soldier, so I know how violent the protest can get. But also, I believe that we should keep that fundamental right to protest. And there are already laws to deal with some of these protesters. When you start spraying paint over buildings, that's criminal damage. Mm. Um, in the middle of a motorway, when you're in the middle of a motorway, you can, you can be prosecuted for, you know, sort of blocking that highway. So there are already laws there. I've been on a protest. My first one was about sort of a year ago. Um, for the anti-lockdown protests, because I was against lockdown, and um, you know, and that was all that was all well and good. And I think there was a few people that caused a bit of disruption after they um, they were quite violent, and you know that's fair enough. They should be arrested. So I feel that there's already enough laws to deal with any kind of disruption from protests, and there doesn't really need to be any more. Do you think that more of the problem is that the police don't appear to understand? whereabouts what their powers are because it seems to me that they don't appear to realize that they have the power to stop a protest in any case i mean i don't see why they're not doing it what, what, what do you think of that julie i mean they do appear to have the laws already in place there are there are lots of public public order laws and they can they can do that whenever they like if anyone like uh, the, the young man said somebody disrupting a protest and behaving violently they can be arrested there's no need to disrupt the whole protest and stop the issues. I mean, yeah, these guys on the motorway, that's just ridiculous. And they should be arrested. And there are stuff in place and the police should know this. Otherwise, why are they policemen?
you go to Italy or somewhere like that and people glue themselves to the, to the road, uh, I've seen things on the internet where they just the police just rip them off there and their hands go, and they're like, ah! You know, I, 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 you know, obviously in this country I wouldn't say that we should be doing that, but I don't see, I don't really see, see that the police need extra laws. I don't think, you know, that's just my personal view, but I understand why they're doing it, Lee. Can you understand why they are doing this, though? I, I don't think, like I said, I don't think they should have extra powers. Um, I think we need our police to be a bit more robust when they turn violent and when they really actually disrupt people. You can't have marches up on motorways, for example. Um, when I done my lockdown march, that was in November time. It was around the streets of London. Yes, there would have been disruption, but to a certain point, that's the whole point of protesting, that you do cause a little bit of disruption. Mm. However, not going around marching on motorways, um, which is endangering your life and endangering the life of motorists as well. So you've got to be aware of where you're carrying out that protest. Um, so, But I, I just feel that there is enough laws to deal with protests at the present and whether they turn violent or whether they're in silly places. I suppose with this one, they could probably stop you from leaving your house. Then that's the thing, isn't it? If you come out with a protest sign. Thank you very much, Lee, Lee Webb. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and uh, Julie Shaw, lovely to yeah. talk to you. Those are my great British voices. And lots of you have been getting in touch with your thoughts as well on plans to crack down on protests. Uh, Rob says, I think most informed people are dumbfounded as to why the current law hasn't been just, just satisfactorily, uh, uh, hasn't been satisfactory to deal with the disruptive protests. I can't help feeling the police have been told to let the protests aggravate people. So it makes it look like more strict laws are needed. No, I think it's an interesting point there. They do appear to have laws, but they don't seem to be using. James says the government needs to bring in stricter laws to help tackle these disruptive eco-warriors. They do more harm than good, and I feel they lost the public support months ago. Uh, true, but then remember, normal people who aren't doing this sort of thing could be caught in the crossfire with these laws. Uh, but Susie says everyone should have the right to protest. They say uh, that uh, they are out to, to target Just Stop Oil. But what if the government disagrees with other demonstrators who don't necessarily align with their views? What will be next? A good question.